Have you ever wondered how airplanes fly? Have you been on a plane? If so, that's awesome. If not, well, maybe after you watch this video, you would want to. Let's take a few minutes to learn how airplanes in the skies above us get there and what keeps them up there. But first, before we take off, let's familiarize ourselves with the different parts of an airplane. This is the fuselage, the main body of an airplane that accommodates the crew, passengers, and the cargo. Here are the wings. This is a critical part of airplanes because they are used for lifting, turning, landing, and controlling the airplane. It is shaped in a specific way to provide enough lift to overcome the airplane's weight. Did you know that airplane is one example of biomimicry? But what is biomimicry? It is the designing and production of materials or structures that are modeled on biological entities and processes or from the nature. To further understand, engineers use the shape of the birds as inspiration to model the planes. Next is the turbine engine. The engines push the airplane forward with a great force that is produced by a tremendous thrust and causes the plane to fly very fast. Under the fuselage, we can see the landing gear. It is the principal support of the airplane when parked, taxing off, or landing. Most common types of landing gears consist of wheels, but airplanes can also be equipped with floats for water operations or skis for landing on snow. At the back of the airplane, we'll find the stabilizers. This part helps the airplane to fly straight. Inside the airplane, we can find the flight deck or cockpit, usually near the front of the airplane from which a pilot controls the aircraft. Inside the cockpit, there is a throttle. It controls the amount of fuel provided to engines, which makes the airplane faster or slower. Next is the yoke also known as the control wheel. It is the steering wheel of an aircraft. It allows the pilot to move the airplane up, down, over left, and over right. Lastly, rudder pedals. This allows the pilot to point the airplane's nose in the direction of the turn. But wait, there's more! There are control surfaces attached on the wings that is controlled inside the cockpit that helps the airplane to fly. First is the flaps. They are movable surfaces on the back of the wings that help the plane make more lift. They are used to help a high-speed plane fly slowly for takeoff and landing. Second is slats. It is located on the front of the wings and their purpose is to increase lift during low-speed operations such as takeoff, initial climb, approach, and landing. Third is the aileron. The ailerons are attached to the outward trailing edge of each wing, which controls movement about the longitudinal axis of an aircraft. This movement is referred to as roll. The next one is spoilers. They are small hinge plates on the top portion of wings. It can be used to slow an aircraft or to make an aircraft descend if they are deployed on both wings. Spoilers can also be used to generate a rolling motion for an aircraft if they are deployed on only one wing. At the back, we can see the rudder. It is a vertical piece of metal at the back that is used to make the plane turn to the right or to the left. Lastly, elevators. The elevator is the small moving section at the back of the stabilizer that is attached to the fixed section by hinges and is used to generate and control the pitching motion of the aircraft. Before everything else, we should also familiarize ourselves with the four forces of flight. We know that wings keep an airplane up in the air, but the four forces are what makes this happen. They push a plane up, down, forward, or slow it down. The first force is lift. It is the force that holds an airplane in the air. The wings create most of the lift used by airplanes. The opposite force of lift is the weight. It is the force caused by gravity. The third force is the thrust. It is a force that moves an aircraft in the direction of the motion. It is created with a propeller, jet engine, or rocket. Air is pulled in and then pushed out in an opposite direction. 
One example is a household fund. And the last force is the drug. It is the force that acts opposite to the direction of motion. It tends to slow an object. Drug is caused by friction and differences in air pressure. An example is putting your hand out of a moving car window and feeling it pull back. Now that you learn the different parts of an airplane and the different types of forces, let's take off and learn how they work. Engines deliver lift and thrust by using a series of fans to squeeze the air smaller and smaller then they add jet fuel to the squeezed air and explode it, shooting the hot air out the back and pushing the airplane forward. The upward force required to lift the plane into the air is provided by the plane's wings. Airplane wings are shaped to make air move faster over the top of the wing. When air moves faster, the pressure of the air decreases so the pressure on the top of the wing is less than the pressure on the bottom of the wing. The difference in pressure creates a force on the wing that lifts the wing up into the air. This explains the Bernoulli's principle which states that fast-moving fluid or air have lower pressure than slowing moving air. In summary, before the airplane begins to move, of course, the runway must be clear, and if it is clear, the pilot who controls the aircraft will begin to accelerate the airplane by starting the engine that produces the thrust or the force that pushes the airplane forward. Then the control surfaces on the airplane's wings, the flaps and slots, are activated to make the lift, and the airplane will begin to climb, and the wheels are retracted as soon as the aircraft is in the air. When the airplane is already in the air flying, the pilots will adjust and manage the control surfaces depending on the circumstances, such as when turning the airplane to the left or right.